Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email us tmasso at the 1916company.com for purchase pricing and availability details of this watch. Today, we are discussing a memorable 2018 launch, the first series production Freak to be available in metals other than precious. This is the Ulysse Norden Freak Out. So, Big news for that year, you get a true seven-day, crownless, bezel-setting, case-back winding freak with carousel movement, and you no longer had to pay for platinum or gold. So this was a breakthrough on that count. Also, being that it is 45 millimeters in diameter, the titanium construction right here makes it very wearable. So in terms of dimensions, 45 in diameter, maybe thinner than you think at 13.7 millimeters thick, from lug tip to lug tip, 54 millimeters with a 23 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now there are some fingerprints here, bear with me, those are not permanent marks on the case. Taking a look at the wrist aspect. You can see it's a large watch, but it does fit me. And in fact, the further you get away from my arm, the more you realize that this would be perfectly acceptable. Big is the look, but then again, with a watch called the Freak, did you really expect discretion? Now, where you will find some accommodation is in the profile, which is sloped and under 14 millimeters thick, so it should be fairly compatible with cuffs. I'd recommend this for a wrist my size or larger, so 16 centimeters circumference and up. Taking a closer look at what you're getting here, it is a broad strap. 23 millimeters is not a highly standardized size, and it does match the size of the watch and the presence of the watch. Just remember, if you're going to get a custom strap, it's 23. Taking a look at the bottom, you can see that it has a conventional lug junction, so spring bars work just fine. This isn't a screw-fixed system or something proprietary. We have a dark navy blue textile on the top with a contrasting binding stitch, and then on the bottom, you can see calfskin, no crimping, no gouging. You leave Snorden factory strap, brand new. Taking a look at the buckle, it is titanium just like the case, and opening it up, you can see a combination here of satin finish and media blast. We also have little spring-loaded pin snaps to help retain the snappiness over time, and you can see one side of the chassis actually doubles as a spring for the twin trigger release, so you are assured of some security against accidental deployment. The case on this particular freakout model features a lovely media blast, so very matte, granular, and soft glowing sort of treatment. And the nice thing about a media blasted case is, in general, when these need to be refinished, you just re-blast. It's not a matter of putting it on a wheel and removing material, you just re-texture. So the watch has a couple of distinctive character lines. You can see that the case is very rotund, like a historic Ulysse Norden marine chronometer or navigation clock. A big part of the company's heritage, and one reason why anchor symbology is ubiquitous on Ulysse Norden watches. You can also see that the bezel has several raised and high grip sort of knurlings at a regular interval around its circumference. And this is because this is a bezel set watch. The second generation Freak that came out in 2005, the Freak 28,800 vibrations per hour, introduced this little locking system down at the base of the dial. And so you lift it when you want to disengage the lock. Now I'm able to set the time and it's very simple. You can see that the base bears the hour indicator and that is what you're looking at right there. And then the baguette caliber, which is one and the same as the drivetrain, the escapement, and the balance, that is your minute hand. Taking another look outboard, we have an individual number plate that's beautifully finished with beveling, satination, and then polished screws. This is a nod to the era when Ulysse Norden was best known for marine chronometers, and marine chronometers from UN, and indeed most manufacturers, had number plates individually affixed to their flanks. There is no crown. This is a traditional freak, just like the one launched in 2001. You wind with the case back, and you set with the bezel. We'll do a quick loom shot, because this watch does have a respectable amount of luminescence. And now, one more time, let me show you how you set the watch right here. This is very easy. We have three o'clock, minutes, hours, just like that. Blue is an important color for Ulysse Norden due to its historical association with the sea. So we have this rubber insert on the bezel up top in blue. We have a blue carriage for the carousel, the nameplate, as well as blued screws. You can see blued screws used prolifically on this dial. And then there is a sapphire plate that features the numerals and they are radially arrayed. They sit on top of a blue brushed metallic base. And if you look carefully, you can see that that base 
actually moves. If you take a look at the Elise Narden logo as well as the hour index, both of them orbit the dials. That nameplate is not fixed. On the reverse of the watch, we have the winding system, which is, you guessed it, the case back. And you can see that the winding takes place by turning. It moves on ball bearings, so it is super smooth. Ulysse Norden, one of the, probably the smallest company in Switzerland, able to own and make its silicon rather than to buy it or license it. Ulysse Norden has interests in Sigatech, which is a company that makes silicon components. We have this little silicon disc with the UN logo and anchor on the case back. You could see the mainspring, seven days of power reserve, and as it becomes more and more coiled around its center, and the coils move from the outside to the inside, it is moving towards fully wound. So when those coils reach the center, it will be fully wound. That's how you can visually estimate the time. You can also see that we have this lovely wave motif on the case back. We have a sunburst on the center over the bearing with blued screws, and then we have a sunburst over the barrel cover that sits below the sapphire viewport. Seven days of power reserve, beat rate four hertz, eight beats per second. Lots going on here. Now, this is what's known as a carousel, which was invented in the 1890s by Danish watchmaker Bonne Bonnickson, working out of England. And his idea was to create something more robust than a tourbillon that served the same purpose. So here we have a carousel. The carousel separates the drivetrain for the carriage from the drivetrain for the escapement, because if they were driven by the same train, I wouldn't be able to do this without crashing the escapement. It would be moving rapidly when I suddenly move the carriage. So having two separate power sources that are independent allows me to use the carousel as the minute hand. Now you can see we have several degrees of multiplication. So the entire drivetrain, essentially everything but the mainspring, the whole movement is right on this carousel. It makes one circuit of the dial every hour, so just like a tourbillon, it rotates the oscillator and the escapement. Now when you get from the train jewels, by the way, note the use of clear sapphires, when you get down from the train jewels across their anchor-shaped bridges to the dual Ulysse escape and you can see that it is made of silicon so this is unlubricated silicon with a synthetic diamond treatment so it's able to operate with very little friction magnetic susceptibility thermal vulnerability and it doesn't ebb in its efficiency over time the way a conventionally lubricated Swiss pallet would because there are no lubricants on it that are drying up and turning to tar or gum. So the system uses a small indexing lever and that's actually what turns the balance. So it's not a double direct impulse system, but it is a double silicon unlubricated escapement with all the advantages of silicon as a material. Now, the balance is Ulysse Norden's own on their own anti-magnetic and thermally resilient hairspring of silicon, and it's a free-sprung architecture with all the adjustments done with little masses on the rim of the balance that move in and out and change the polar moment or turning force. So it's both very shock resistant and very precise to adjust. Again, you can see the a cup jewel and the capstone there are clear sapphires. You can also see that the finishing on the carousel is to an extraordinarily high standard with fire blued screws, satination across the top of the bridges, and then we do have mirrored beveling on the edges. Not the easiest thing to see, but it is there. There's also solarization on the disc below the carriage, and the watch is extraordinarily distinctive. The Freak is one of those watches that represents among the most important threads of horology in our industry. I would argue that the 2001 Freak, a revolution then and a classic now, was the Urwatch of our entire generation of luxury timepieces. And this is one of the latest iterations, and it's got a feature that no Freak prior to 2013 had, which is water resistance. This is 30 meters, and while that not, might not sound like a lot compared to many other watches, remember historically the Freak was zero. So the Freak out, like the Cruiser and Blue Cruiser, is 30 meters water resistance resistant and yet a traditional crownless freak. Reach out to Team Also at the1916company.com for purchase and pricing details.